Okay, so I want to talk to you about the energy of April. Do you remember last month when I said the energy of March, April, May? We're going to be three of the biggest, most transformational months of the year. Well, welcome to April and we are in the thick of it. So we have not only entered into the new astrological year, we did this in, in March, but we have also entered into a new era with Pluto moving into Aquarius. Now, the transformation has not ended. It is only just beginning. And that is because we have eclipse season coming up for us in April. So I'm already, I'm feeling, I'm filming this at the end of March and I'm feeling this forward moving Aries beginning of the new year energy and it is just like zooming by. I am like holding on, trying to ground myself and keep up with this forward moving momentum and making sure I'm not moving into overwhelm and too much to do, right? It's almost like all the lights have suddenly gone on and you've got so much inspiration and drive and creativity and motivation to move ahead and get everything done that you've been waiting to get done for so long. And this is very Aries. This is exactly what the Aries energy is about. It's ruled by Mars. It is all about moving forward. It is about taking action. It is about forging ahead into new pathways. And so, yeah, let's do it. Let's trailblaze along with this energy but we've got to remain grounded as well because there's a lot of Aries energy. We've got Jupiter in Aries as well as the Sun and Mercury at the beginning of the month. So when we've got Jupiter there, he's like expanding all this beautiful forward moving energy, but it can become a little bit overwhelming because Jupiter's just it just like I said, he just expands, but he can also take things to the next to the next level and he's just more and more and more. So hold on to your hats with all this Aries energy. Make sure you're grounding your energy and try to get as much done as you can with these first few weeks um, of April before the energy shifts when we move into the second half of April. And I will say that this Jupiter energy, Jupiter in Aries, is going to meet the Sun in Aries on the 13th of April. Now, Jupiter meets the Sun once a year and it is known as the luckiest day of the year. So I'll be reminding of you that closer to the time that it really is a day where it's just like blessings and good luck and good fortune and you just have so much optimism and courage and it's it's a beautiful combination but like I said make sure that Jupiter is not overwhelming you with so much to do because you all of a sudden you like I said the lights have gone on and you see all the possibilities and you just want to do it all so just make sure that you don't move into overwhelm so first half of April move ahead, action, do what you need to get done, follow those inspiration. You're going to have a lot of energy. Try not to move into overwhelm. So the energy changes tune by we get to mid-month around the 20th. We're going to have our first eclipse of the 2023. And interestingly, it's going to be in Aries. Now, the eclipses for the last 18 months have been on the axes of Scorpio and Taurus. And we are still going to have a few Scorpio Taurus, probably one of each for the rest of this year. But the axis is moving into the new signs of um, Aries and Libra. This is where the, the eclipses are going to be hitting for the next year and a half. So we're going to get our first preview of this activation of, of this area of life with this first eclipse hitting us in Aries. So you want to know what area of life Aries rules for you personally, because this is where you're going to experience a lot of change and transformation, probably more in 2024, but it's definitely going to begin now. You've got to notice the theme now. But this is a really big new moon. And again, it's that Aries energy. So and eclipses have the energy to really pick us up and put us where we're meant to be. They can really disrupt us and create a lot of change, sometimes chaos, sometimes hidden blessings, but it's quick moving and it's final. So if something is going to be leaving your life now during the eclipses, it is meant to be, let it go. It will not be coming back into your life. I know it's sounding morbid, isn't it? I'm not meaning to sound morbid. Eclipses can be really exciting because it's change and you know that the change that is coming for you with an eclipse, it is always for your highest good because it is, it is destiny. It is the hand of fate working 
for your highest good, working for your benefit. Now, if you want to know more about the eclipses and the axes and you know how they actually work, I have another video. I'll link it below. You can learn all about the eclipses by watching that. So we have our first eclipse in Aries on the 20th of April. And then two weeks later, we're going to have our, our next eclipse, which will be in Scorpio. Now, this is probably going to be the last eclipse in Scorpio, but I'll talk more about that as we get into May, because that's actually going to be at the beginning of May. But what collectively the energy, we've, we've looked at the individual energy of this Aries eclipse. Now let's look at it from a broader perspective. You know, when it, eclipses are with us, these two week windows, we're really going to be feeling this. It's not exactly a settled energy when we're, when, we're, when we're in the eclipse portal, the eclipse window of time. Most of April, especially from the second half onwards, you might be feeling a bit ungrounded. Change might be happening. There could be a lot of movement and disruption, good or bad, whatever your perception is. But it's not exactly a time to be making really hard, fast, long-term decisions because the energy is not settled. It's a lot of change and commotion. It's almost like you're in the eye of the storm. You don't want to be be making any huge changes right now you want to be going with the energy and flowing with where the energy is taking you but you don't want to turn around and suddenly tell your partner you want to get divorced <laughs> or you're suddenly going to just pack up and move overseas like us <laughs> i wouldn't exactly make that plan during an eclipse portal time this is something that we've been planning for a while so but interestingly enough, like I feel like there's a lot of electricity in the air for April. Like there's a lot going on. We're all really stimulated. We're all really, there's a lot of fire. We're really like, go, go, go. And so make sure you're grounding your energy. Just be careful of that. And the good thing is just after this eclipse, the sun is actually going to move into Taurus. So it's going to bring the energy down. And I actually think by the end of April, this is going to be a welcome relief we are all going to take a bit of a break and mercury is going retrograde then too so it really feels like from all this electricity and this forward moving energy and all this go 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 aries that we're feeling once we get towards middle to late april we're going to be able to take a breath of fresh air thanks to mercury retrograde in taurus and the sun moving into taurus we're going to just be able to take a break and almost allow the integration of the eclipses and the change and transformation that has been coming all the way through March and April, we're going to allow it to integrate. Because when we have so much change and transformation happening, we need to let the dust settle so we can kind of move on to the next thing because we're not quite done with the transformation yet. We still have another eclipse, remember, in Scorpio at the beginning of May. So we've got to need this little bit of a breather to just be like, Whoa. and the beautiful thing about Taurus is it's grounded. It's, it's a slower moving energy. It is more about the body and we're coming back into the body because the Aries has been stimulating all this action and all this fire and all this motivation in us and possibly anger. So be careful of that. Um, this, this, this Taurus energy is really going to be helping us to just get back down to what is important. You know, really laying our roots, laying our foundation and just connecting back to the body and the breath, you know, and the simple pleasures in life. You know, it's a really beautiful energy to have. And that's what I love about astrology. You know, we can, it, it's always balances itself out. It's very yin yang. We're always going to have this activation, but then we're always going to be balanced with these periods of integration. And this is what I feel is happening now. Yes, it's another Mercury retrograde, but I think it's going to be a welcome relief. And it will be in the sign of Taurus. So, you know, that might be dealing with our self-worth. It might also be dealing with uh, our finances. You know, interestingly enough, where this Mercury is going retrograde <clears throat> is actually going to be the same place that our last eclipse in Taurus is going to be activating in, in October. So it's almost like there's a bit of a reflection that needs to be done in this area of life. And if you don't know astrology, it's fine. Um, if you don't know what areas rule different by, by different uh, signs, you will f you will know where where you've been called to change and transform in this area because you've been having eclipses there for the last 18 months. 
And it's like this Mercury retrograde is like almost just going over the last lessons of the eclipses that have been in this area of Taurus for the last 18 months before we have that final eclipse, you know, in October. So it really is an integration period. And I feel like anything that is lingering, anything that is left that really needs to be cleaned up, then that is going to be um, definitely integrated and assimilated in during this April time. So yeah, enjoy it. Get everything you need to get done at the beginning of, of April. Anything really important because Mercury, you know, the little trickster, he's really going to um, slow things down and obviously make important documents and communication a little bit um, a little bit more tricky. So, you know, um, you want to get anything done at the beginning of, of April. Yeah, and just use the energy of the Mercury retrograde to redo, rethink, reintegrate, you know, the issues or themes or the blocks that are coming up because that's kind of your signal to like, okay, I've got a bit of work to do here. So enjoy the month of April. Like, I do feel it is probably the best month to get everything done because once Mercury goes retrograde and we've got the eclipses and then once we get into June, it, that becomes our retrograde season as it does every year. And that's when our, our, the our outer planets start to go backwards and you know we'll have Jupiter go retrograde as well and it's not that you can't make progress during this time but it is more um there's more of inner work to be done so this is the time April is the time to be going forward moving confidently with your dreams and you know just like putting your stuff out there and really going for it and making bold big decisions before Mercury goes retrograde so have a beautiful April I will see you in May with an update it is my intention to do an update for May. As you know by now, we are packing up our home and we are selling everything and we are moving overseas. So we are doing this in May. So I'll be packing up my house. So I'm, it is my intention to get on here and do a video for you. But who knows, I'll be leaving it up to the moment as I usually do and seeing where the energy takes me. But until then, have a beautiful April.